Hello, 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 this is Attorney Mike Gravel coming to you from Chicago. As usual, I've got two doozies. Oh, wait, that's what I was doing. I have to look it up. I have to look up just a second. Oh, Ashley Santiago hooked me up with the first one. It is a delicate flower. Oh, man. <laughs> she has something else. That's just the warm up for the worst witness I've ever seen in my life. Horrible. Horrible. The defendant calls the witness. Devastating to the, the the defendant's case. The witness knows it. Tells him not to do it. <laughs> then he proceeds to call him, destroy anything of a defense that he could possibly ever have, and 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 do a horrible job of it. It's it, it, the the fact scenario was awful, but but the that particular scenario, that portion of it is funny. Let's do this thing, shall we? Okay, that'd be a no. You could get out of jail by the time the, uh, the uh, first bowl game is played next year in football. Do you want to do that, ma'am? Because I can make I am it happen. Not yelling. I can make it happen, ma'am. So here's the deal. Don't yell at me. I'm not yelling. I'm simply speaking up so everyone can hear me because okay, everybody keeps going in and me. out, in and yeah. out. Okay, ma'am, it's coming across as this. You're coming in loud and clear on me. It sounds like you're yelling at me, okay? It's $100 uh, dated April 22nd, 2003. And the final one's 550 dated March 3rd, 2012. Is that correct? Okay, now the, 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 the 2003 is closer to when the original or when the when the amount was originally set. But later on, we decided it would benefit her if we sent a little bit more. Okay, but these are all the, this is all the proof that you have, correct? Yeah, that's all I can find. Plus, um, you should have records of where you kept my tax returns. Yes, that's all. You should that's have, you have records for the last four years of where you've taken payment out of my out of my income. There is no overpayment to the state. There is no back payments for Sedavia India Selden as far as child support is concerned. Okay. Now, Miss Snow, just to let you know, you were sending these direct payments. You, you mailed them, it says here, directly to 1411 Illinois Avenue in Colleen. Did you write that on there? That is, that's where they went. Yes, that's where the payments went. And as per the order, it says the child support of $100 per month with first payment being due payable July 5, 2000, and the like payment being due and payable on the first day of each month thereafter until the first month following the date of the earliest occurrence of the one event specified until the child reaches the age of 18 years old. Right. Now, the reason we also sent more money. Ma'am, 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 ma stop, 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 ma'am. Order, order, order. Here's the deal, ma'am, stop. You're not allowed to go in there the state. Yeah, you're the witness now. The state's going to ask you questions. Just right. answer questions and stop. We know what the I got the court order. I can read the order myself. That's not a problem, ma'am. This is fun. The, the husband or whatever, ex-husband, the, the guy, bottom left, he just sits this whole hearing and doesn't talk like typical of these guys. He doesn't talk and just smiles and laughing at everyone else dealing with what he's been dealing with. So we're, this, we're, no, we're, this address that you mailed, this, is that Mr. Selden's address or, or was it Mr. Selden's address? That was the address, yes. That's the address he has listed on the order. I see. Okay. Now, why were you making direct payments to him when it, when it was court ordered to, to be paid through the registry of the court? No, it was not court ordered to be paid to the registry of the court because it says right here that it just... Uh, based on her name, it's only occasionally. That, that's my understanding. It says the $100 a month. <laughs> Per month due with the first payment. It doesn't say where. It said it was to be paid to Bobby Selden. Right. By me. Ashley and Snow. I understand. So, so you just said that word to send it. July 5th of 2000. Okay. It's actually in the order to be payable to the registry. It's in the order to be tabled to the registry. What do you mean? I should have had that. It's on, it's on a different page. It tells you where to send it. Which page is it on? Because I'm looking at the order right now. Well, the court court will have a copy of it. Now, Miss Snow, were you represented by an attorney when this order was done? 
yes. Okay, you had an attorney. Which page? I like to know which page that was on, please, because I'm looking at this order and there is no such page here. Okay. You know how this makes me feel? I'll tell you. That I was entitled with, that I was entangled with the state. Until page six, it was in the Oak County Courthouse until it was, uh, until they stopped doing that, and then all the payments went through the registry of, to the state disbursement. <clears throat> but we would have notified you. But you said it was in the order. What page is it on? I need that. Page six. Page six. Okay, yes. let's go to page six. Two, three, five, and six. It says right here. The, the, the paragraph second from the from the bottom there it tells you where to make the payments. It says on this date the court signed an employer's order to withhold from earnings for child support. On the next sentence. In this order, all payments shall be made through the Bell County Courthouse Child Support Office. Okay. Yes, that's how we keep the record of it. So by law, any direct payments are considered a gift to Mr. Selden unless the court decides to give credit for it. So that's going to be an issue for the court to decide. But by law, you, you're required to send the payments to a central registry get credit okay well those payments cannot and should not be discounted because that's money out of my household well actually it, you didn't make those payments you're saying your husband made them right that's my household okay gotcha okay. All right. right i passed the witness your honor all right here's the deal ma'am the husband doesn't even care he doesn't even care if he ever sees the money well i whatever shit why he has custody of the kids and she's paying him child support it, it, it implies a lot of things about her if you ask me but he's just like i'm never gonna see this money but i find this whole thing hilarious well, i know you know lawyer if you want to uh, reset this to go talk to a lawyer i'll let you do that but the line uh, uh mr uh Selden is saying he didn't receive those funds there's nothing on these receipts to show where they went how they went and whether or not there's no endorsements these are not checks uh there's no proof that he's actually received those funds ma'am uh, do you have anything to show that he actually received a, a verification from him by letter or mail that he received them or, uh, or anything? anything? First, yeah, it, it appears that this guy just never even got any of these payments. It, it may just be all fraudulent, you know, just made up on her. I mean, maybe it's not, but I, I don't see any verification that she made these payments. First of all, no, I don't. And second of all, I don't know anyone who would... Uh, who would return down free, free money, okay? And allow this to go on the record. I have paid and paid and paid into this. And now that I'm in dire straits, I have no way of making any more payments to Bobby Selden. So I'm not, He's what I am well, going to submit is that a reduction of child support be made in the amount of zero dollars per month because I'm not going to make any. Oh, she's so dim. She doesn't even know that the, the sentence she <laughs> she just said, I want a reduction of zero dollars, which would mean, you know, maintaining the current child support, which she's not paying. But she she doesn't. She doesn't know what she's saying. More payments to him. So if you want to send me to jail, then you can do that. Just tell me hey, where to report you, you because I'm not you going through this and I'm tired of this. in this court, ma'am. You are going to jail, ma'am. You hear me? Stop it. Do not yell at this court. We're not, this is my court, ma'am. And I'll give a dang how mad you get. Now I'm angry. And if I get angry, you could get out of jail by the time the, uh, the uh, first bowl game is paid next year in football. Do you want to do that, ma'am? Because I can make I am it not happen. yelling. I can make it happen, ma'am. So here's the deal. Don't yell at me. I'm not yelling. I'm simply speaking up so everyone can hear me because okay, everybody keeps going in and out, in and yeah, out. Okay, ma'am. It's coming across as if this. You're coming in loud and clear on me. It sounds like you're yelling at me, okay? Well, no, I'm not yelling. But when you okay, talk, here's the, here's I can't hear you. I, I don't think you probably can't afford a lawyer. 
Uh, that may be the fact, ma'am, but I've got to hold you to the same standards if you're an attorney. There's no motion before this court by uh, you with notice on Mr. Selden that, uh, for any type of affirmative cause of action. In, in other words, if you're asking me to do something, you've got to file it and you've got to serve it and you've got to notice it and you've got to notice the stake you're asking for. You just can't come to court the only day and say, this is what I want to do. It's just, that's not the way it's done. You got served with a copy of the paperwork. You knew what was going to happen today, and he's entitled to that same type of notice. So the only thing I got before the court right now is a state's request to reduce this to a judgment. And uh, I, the simple question I have, did you have any proof that Mr. Selden had received any of these funds? Because right now, ma'am, I can't even know. There's nothing to show who these even made out to. This is not even a U.S. money, a postal money, or at least let you fill in the blanks the show has been sent to. Okay, but then you do have copies of where my you do have copies of where my state tax income was taken, and for the last four years. Okay, here's the ma'am. Uh, everything that's been received by the state. Okay, so you didn't buy my fraudulent money orders, but you but they did take money out of my check. <laughs> uh, that's she didn't say that. But I, that, that's that's the way it sounds to me. From, from you, from income tax, whatever, it has been calculated into the pay record. Go page by page through that pay record, and you'll see what you've been given credit for. Well, I would like to submit that this uh, uh, child support reduction to zero dollars per month. It's denied, ma'am, because it's not properly before the court this time in, a, in the form of a pleading, ma'am. Okay, well, I first of all, I didn't ask to come to court. Someone else drug me into court. Ma'am, that's the way court works. <laughs> do, you, do you know people who like going to court? That's the way court works. That's a variation on I, I don't consent right there. It works. You've been served and noticed that this is something that's uh, been trying to be taken care of. This is a lawsuit from a long time ago. And uh, uh, these are the uh, and and the state's trying to uh, uh, finalize this and get it taken care of because it's never been finished up, ma'am. It's there's you're alleged to owe a certain amount of money, and the court's looking at uh, the information. It, it says that over this time frame, uh, uh, they and with interest, it's, it's and Texas has judgment interest uh, that you should have paid twenty three thousand. Uh, $319.12, you paid $12,486.58, which leaves a balance of $10,832.54. This is not a current child support. This is old child support uh, that is still uh, owed uh, uh, to Mr. Selva. Well, allow me to make this statement again. I am in severe dire straits, and there is absolutely no way I can make any more payments on this right. phenomenon. We've heard. We've heard. All right, ma'am. Well, here's the deal. Under under uh, under what's his norm, I've got to reduce this to a judgment, and there's no new child support over. But I do have to reduce the amount that you is still owed to a judgment, and I got to order a, a, a repayment amount that covers the interest uh, plus something that's going to reduce it down. The interest alone on this thing going forward is about $50 a month. So the normal payment on something like that is an additional $50 to $75 a month. So I would look at ordering you to repay. And uh, uh, I could keep it at, a, I could order it at 100 because I think that's what the old amount was supposed to be anyway. But uh, again, ma'am, it's going to be somewhere. The repayment on this is 100 to $125 uh, until it's paid off in full. And it's been, it's been charged 6% per month against you, which means $50 a month. So, Ms. Snow, do you have Again, any questions? You ask me I, am, I am in extreme dire straits, and there is no way I can pay $50 a month if that is what you said. Because, as I said, you keep coming in and out. I can't really hear you. So, if you're oh, saying that oh you're making a judgment for me to pay $50 a month, I am in extreme dire straits at this time, and there is no way I can make a payment of $50 a month. Okay, ma'am, that's not what I said. The interest alone is fifty dollars a month on your case. You're coming in loud and clear on I am. I'm not sure what's happening on yours. Because again, ma'am, you're coming in at high volume here. 
So right now, ma'am, the judgment is going to be ten thousand and some change. I'm looking at an order repayment of a hundred dollars a month, and I've got no way around that, ma'am. That's what the law requires me to do. And if you Your Honor, the only other issue would be court costs. I don't know if you want to waive them or sell them. I'll waive the court costs. Uh, I'll let the county eat that but again. Uh, she says she's not, but again, ma'am, uh, I, I can't take into consideration uh, even if you show the court. What the dire straits were, I'm a juror and all that. Only, the only thing I could do is adjust it to make sure that uh, uh, the, the interest is made plus something toward the principal. And the interest alone is $50 yeah. a month, ma'am. That would be perfect for this one. And right, and right now, I've got no testimony or nothing showing what your current income is, what your current circumstances are, and what your current uh, 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 bills are, and so forth and so on. Those are the kind of things the court needs to have, uh, to have enough data to make a determination on what the court should order. And the old child support amount is at $100. I usually order it always at the old child support amount, but I can make adjustments. But right now, the adjustments would still be that right around that $100 a month mark. So, ma'am, unless uh, uh, you want to give me some testimony of what your circumstances are, uh, how much you get, what, uh, 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 what, what your sources are, and what your uh, monthly bills are, I'm looking at having to go for at least the, uh, at, the, at the $100 a month amount, ma'am. Now, ma'am, you turned off your microphone. You need to unmute yourself. I did send in what my monthly bills were. You have a record of that. I sent that in with the notice request. Your Honor, I didn't provide that to you. I know, I know. She thinks she, ma'am, it wasn't sent to me. It was sent for, as far as information for the state. I, everything that comes before the court has to come in the form of evidence. I ma'am, mean, I get it. You're not a lawyer. Wait, so, so, right so now, you have I, that? No, ma'am, I do not have that. <laughs> it has not been presented as evidence in the court, ma'am. Okay, so why, why, why not? That's evidence of the court that I am in extreme dire straits and I can't. Because you don't know how to present evidence. <laughs> she, she gets all over the judge about it. It's your job. You're, you're the one asking for a reduction. Make these payments. Your Honor, I'd be happy to send, send uh, the letter that she sent itemizing her bills. Do you want to send it? Go ahead and send it over. Okay, I'll send it. Thank you. Sure. Let's see. Let's see. All right, ma'am, what do you do for a living now? I am. Oh, she's simple. She's simple, but she is a genius compared to the next guy we got. We got coming up. I'm unemployed right now. All right, and uh, are you getting any type of disability? I am not disabled. All right, when's the last time you had full or part-time employment, ma'am? Uh, three months ago. And what were you doing for a living then, ma'am? I worked for the state of Texas. All right, and uh, why did you? Uh, and what did you do for the state of Texas, ma'am? I was uh, an admin assistant for the benefit and payment uh, department. Which department, ma'am? Benefit and Payment Department. Okay, and uh, and who did that fall under? Was that the executive branch? Was that uh, uh, law enforcement? Who? Which uh, which uh, department did you actually work for, ma'am? That would be Texas Workforce Commission. All right, good enough. And how long did you work for them? Uh, three years. All right, and why did you leave that position, ma'am? Uh, they just asked me to leave. I didn't leave. They asked me to leave. It's a mystery. Right. Are you currently getting any, any type of unemployment? I do not. All right. Did you apply? No. All right, ma'am. Uh, what's your, uh, uh, okay. Are you looking for current employment, ma'am? Yeah. I am. I'll say what she's not saying. She was probably terminated for cause. All right, ma'am. And uh, what are your prospects at this time? My prospects for employment at this time is, well, I'm currently going through a program, a certification to teach social studies grade four through eight starting this upcoming year. 
providing I can get through the program. And do you have a job when you're not in custody? Yes, I do have a job. Where do you work? Yeah. Where do you work? Oh, I work, um, I sell burritos sometimes. I mean, what city do you live in? Uh, clean. Let's have a show of hands for everyone who wants this woman teaching their kids. All right, and have you put in for any type of part-time employment or anything else, ma'am, in the interim? I have applied for, uh, I am still currently looking for employment. Nothing has come up yet. Yeah, it's not going to. Your Honor, I mean, uh, I don't know if you want to consider the NCP Choices program. This was just a confirmation of arrears, you know, but uh, it could help her. I'm not sure. Okay. Uh, yeah, that, that's through the Workforce Commission. So, uh, ma'am, uh, uh, would you be interested in the NCP Choices Program? Yes. All right, let's put it in see what an NCP Choices Program person and see if she's eligible for that. <laughs> and let's go off the record for a few minutes to see how, whether or not that's uh, something that's appropriate. Obviously, they will help her look for, for a position. <laughs> Your Honor, I've emailed the letters to what the expenses are. Okay. Anyway, I'm going to go off the record for a moment, man, uh, and Mr. Uh, Sheldon, I hate to make you hang around, sir, but I, I need to come up with an order, and uh, I, I really, and right now, I may be only looking at a temporary order to cover the interest while we are uh, waiting to see uh, uh, Ms. Snow get full-time employment, uh, or part-time employment, or should we just start charging against the interest, of, uh, uh, or against the, principal, against the principal, so we can get this thing down. But if for right now, let's go ahead and get her into a breakout room with the NCP choices rep. All right. That's all I have. Thanks again to Ashley Santiago for sending that to me and editing it for me. That was very cool. This next bit, a lot of people have been talking about this trial. Uh, it's it's the subject matter. So nasty. I didn't want to sit through the whole trial, but this one witness is absolutely fascinating to me. Uh, it's 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 interesting. It's funny in a dark way. And, uh, you know, it's just kind of interesting. But uh, who is it? Kayla um, put me on to this particular witness. Uh, from, the, uh, from the lectern spy. Yeah. <clears throat> oh. Can you hear me? Yes, thank you. Yes, sir. All right. And uh, Mr. Wilkerson, uh, you have been called. Uh, to the stand by the defendant in this case. Everyone is agreeing for you to do this uh, by Zoom since you are um, have a health issue that you're dealing with. Raise your right hand, sir. Do you solemnly swear or affirm the testimony you are about to give shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. So help you God. I do. Lower your hand. Thank you. And uh, if you would uh, be so kind, Mr. Mr. Peoples, work from that uh, lectern so he can see you uh, clearly. Thank you. Not really dark humor, but uh, stupid humor set in a dark context, if, if we're being honest. What? Mind you there. Uh. Primarily, this guy is just so low functioning. I would feel bad making fun of him, except he's a miserable person and, and deserves it. That, let's, let's just say that. But I, I, I mean, I don't know. How, literally, I don't know how this guy gets his shoes on. He's he's that he's that dim. Right behind you. Oh, there we go. And turn the lectern uh, counterclockwise toward. Yeah, there you go. So. All right. And then. There he is up there and also up there. All right. Uh, and you've been called uh, by Mr. Peebles, the defendant in this case. Go ahead. So uh, we want to talk about your affidavit. You need to look at it first. Are you in front of uh, Yeah, because this is, this is the affidavit. You can testify to the Yes. All right. So, uh, Mr. Wilkinson. Yes, it's uh you were my lawyer back starting back in 2019 correct yes sir that's correct and mr peoples uh before i start answering questions i want to remind you 
um, that everything that you have told me uh, is protected by attorney-client privilege and confidentiality. And once I start answering questions on the stand here today, you will waive that privilege. I don't, I don't practice in this area, so I, I just have never come across this. I can't believe a defendant is calling a prior attorney and asking the questions that he is asking here. But you cannot say, clearly he has advised this guy not to do it. He makes a record of it right here, and you will see why. Uh, Wilkerson? Yes. You understand? He's, you understand? Of course, that, I understand. Yeah. Well, you have to respond to that for the record oh. because of issues that might come up later. Yeah, you understand? I, understand. I understand. And you agree to that. I agree. Paul, oh, go ahead. Ask. Thank you. Ms. Wil Mr. Wilkerson, you've been yeah. uh, concealing this paperwork for quite some time, correct? What paperwork are you referring to? All the paperwork that I kept asking you about. In and the stuff that I kept asking you to look into and, and when I kept telling you about the lies that they was telling, can you, oh. please, can you please stay to the state to the court the first time? OK, and be like you warned me, I want to remind you that before my revocation, before my revocation, you know, I used to call you on the phone a lot and talk to you and ask you about uh, uh, my, my case over the phone. So when you talk about turning client privilege, I waived that right in jail because we used to talk about my case over the phone a lot, right? Ask your questions. Okay. okay. We used to talk about my case over the phone a lot. Uh, by, by the way, all that's wrong, like what he just said. <laughs> it, it's irrelevant. The judge wants him to move on with his questioning, but but no, that's not a waiver of, of his privilege. What he's doing right now is. And, and it, it, oh God. A lot, right? Uh, yes, once upon a time we did. So the thing is, before my revocation, wasn't I trying to diligently uh, get the paperwork from you? Let me just start with that. Wasn't I trying to diligently get some paperwork from you about my case? And you kept saying. Mr. Peoples, when you say get the paperwork about your case, what I'm taking you to understand is you were asking me to turn over the discovery materials in your cases. And uh, as you are aware, under Section 3914 of the Code of Criminal Procedure, I'm not allowed to turn over discovery materials. Now, on Monday, um, because you are pro se, uh, judge ordered me and your other attorney to turn over everything we had in your file. And I did so pursuant to that order that allowed me to step aside of 3914 of the Code of Criminal Procedure. But I will also remind you that you initially hired me on a motion to revoke probation and you had not at that time been indicted for the aggravated sexual assault cases. So the paperwork in that particular case was the most. Bear in mind, you can't see it right here. We're at a jury trial. We have 12 jurors in the box. And the defendant is introducing this testimony, waiving a privilege and introducing this testimony to 12 people who are going to decide if he's guilty to revoke probation and it was not until you were indicted that discovery became available uh, with regard to your aggravated sexual assault charges and as you I believe noted we spoke about that discovery material on a number of occasions yes and I'm not talking about before I was indicted I'm talking about right before the revocation hearing when I was calling you in and the letter that I sent you, well, do you remember the, those letters I sent you? Uh, I remember that you sent me letters. Right. Do you remember when? Uh, as you've noted, this goes back to 2019. I, I don't remember specific dates. I'm, no, that was right before my revocation hearing. 
You so okay. Let me ask you this. It was this time I kept calling your assistant and I kept asking you to I kept asking your assistant to have you subpoena this person, subpoena that person, and I kept asking you to hey, uh can you bring me the search warrants? Can you bring me the search warrants? What what you kept telling me about the search warrant before my revocation here? In 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 subpoenaing people. Well, what you kept telling me about the search warrant? With regard to what search warrant? Um again, yeah. again, prior to your revocation, uh prior to you being for aggravate indicted for the aggravated sexual assaults, you uh there was no search warrants or anything. What I told you subsequent to you being indicted was that I could not turn over your discovery materials um, because of Article 3914 of the Texas Code of Criminal Procedure. Now, later on, subsequent... Subsequent to your first trial on your aggravated sexual assault that uh, I actually got an acquittal for you on, um, I did turn over some search warrants based solely on the fact that they are available at the Beaumont Police Department as public records. So, Mr. Wilkerson, right before my revocation here, like I just asked you, I kept asking you for those search warrants. What was you telling me? That I could not turn them over to you because of the Texas Code of Criminal Procedure. So why is it you turn them over to me after I found out the law of them being public information after I got convicted? Why did you turn them over to me then if you couldn't turn them over to me beforehand? I turned the search warrants over to you uh, because they were available as public record and therefore I so I uh, I saw no reason to withhold those records. Um, I will note, however, you reviewed those search warrants with me on several occasions. And you remember as you was reading you remember how many times you would start off saying, uh, blah, 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 blah. Oh, uh, what about, uh, she said that you were such and such and such. You know, remember how you would always skip parts, big major. Oh my God. On top of all this, and it, it, it gets worse. It gets worse here. Just this dynamic. He calls this guy. He wants to throw his attorney under the bus. His attorney previously got him an acquittal on a charge. I'm sure, I'm sure he was guilty of sin of if I, if I had to guess. And then he he wants to he wants to get into it and say this attorney's bad. This this attorney's not feeling well, but he's a sharp guy. So I, I mean, it's like it's like a three year old picking a fight with a UFC fighter. <laughs> it's just ugly. Your parts, you remember that? No, sir. But I will not argue with you about it. If that's what you're representing, then. I'm not trying to I'm, I'm trying to get an understanding on your decisions. If you knew these search warrants was public information, why did you conceal them from me before my revocation here? Mr. I, I I'm not sure what you mean by conceal them from you when I discussed them with you. I visited with you at the jail several times. You read documents at the jail, Mr. Peoples. So I don't know. I did not conceal them from you. After my revocation hearing, you let you start letting me read them. But it wasn't too long after and you giving me physical copies. Now, why did you give me the physical copies uh, after the trial when you saying you couldn't give them to me before? Why did you give them? Let's say, let's say, take out the search warrants. Why did you give me the evidence and the copies of other stuff? Why did you give me that after the trial? If you could, I, I did not turn anything over to you except for the search warrants prior to being ordered to do so 
by the court on Monday. You you telling me you didn't turn this revocation uh this revocation uh excerpt the testimony from Ray Nasha Johnson? You didn't tell you didn't send me this. The the record? Yes, I. I love it also when he, he thinks he's making a point. He's not. But he, he's all excited. He thinks he's having his Perry, Mo, Perry Mason moment here. And he said, you telling me you didn't send me this revocation? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I enjoyed it. Sent you the record. I turned that over Monday as well. But yes. I, sent you, I sent you the record of your testimony. That's not discovery. The, that the, was the record of, I'm sorry, not your testimony. That was the testimony of Reynasha. Right. You, you, you kept refusing to give me that too. But the, 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 the trend, I mean, the, um, the evidence from Facebook, you kept refusing to give me that. Are you, Miss, what I understand you to be speaking of right now are, um, documents that you provided to my office. Right. And you kept refusing. My wife brought these documents up there. My sister and my wife together. You you told me with your, your, with your own mouth. Yeah, they came up there and, and if they was telling me such and such and they gave me something, but I don't remember. I say, so they didn't give you the Facebook comments of that? You don't remember. You say, I don't remember no Facebook comments. Uh, uh. But then all of a sudden, after I get convicted and, and, and I badger you about uh, the, uh, my, the Facebook comments and my sister start badging you again about the Facebook comment. Then all of a sudden, who you remember and you sent them to me. What was that and about? I found, and by the way, that was not subsequent to you being convicted on the, um, on the aggravated assault that you had been placed on probation for pursuant to your plea of guilty and to which you prove you pled true to a number of violations on but i i did not give those to you until it was well after your uh the trial that i got an acquittal for you on um and i gave them to you because i found them in uh, your file while reviewing it in the process of defending a grievance that you filed on me con uh, alleging that I was engaged in a conspiracy with the state of Texas, the court, and the police officers who investigated your case, uh, to which I, well, I'll stop there. So, why did I have to file a grievance on you for you to give me this? Mr. Peebles, I just explained that I was going through the entirety of your file when I located the documents that you had requested. However, the Facebook messages that you requested um, aren't were never relevant to the matters at hand. There are people in those documents who talk about uh, DNA existing, but they aren't identifiable as parties. I, and as far, I, so I don't, anyway, uh, I turned them over to you because I found them in reviewing your file after you accused me of conspiracy, uh, to have you acquitted and then to have you convicted on these other charges. So when I was acquitted, what did you do? What, what question did you ask outside of me telling you to ask? I'm sorry. What questions did you ask her outside of me telling you to ask? You only asked her what I told you to ask her, right? You only, you was only question asking questions that I told you to ask, right? Um, no, that is not correct. All right. Yeah. Is this your affidavit? I, I don't know. Well, I don't know what you're holding up. No way you can see that. All right. Let me see. Uh, right there. So the habeas corpus idea, 1107 habeas corpus idea, right? They say this is your affidavit. 
affidavit of trial counsel in response to the writ of habeas corpus that you filed. Marcus Wilkinson, so this is your affidavit, correct? That's correct. So it was some things in here that you said that uh, we need to hash out with the court that these officers were saying, right? So there's this one part in your affidavit that you said the officer who noted the registration for the vehicle was expired was the officer who approached the passenger side of the vehicle. The officer approaching the driver's side of the vehicle agreed. Then, as if demonstrating to the applicant, shined his light on the vehicle's window where the registration stickers were typically ap applied. Applicant alleges there was no registration sticker on his vehicle. This information was not provided to me prior to applicant's revocation hearing. Did you say that? That there was no uh, sticker on your vehicle at oh. all? No. Oh. You said you reviewed the video, and the officer who noted that the registration uh, for the vehicle was expired was the officer who approached the passenger side of the vehicle. The officer approaching the driver's side of the vehicle agreed, then as of demonstrating to the applicant, shined his light on the vehicle's window, where registration stickers are typically applied. You said... This is what you witnessed after you reviewed the video. Mind you, this is what we both witnessed after we both reviewed this video together. But this is your affidavit uh, uh, admitting to this, right? Mr. Peoples, what you're saying is that I had the, <laughs> that I, as I noted in the affidavit, where registration stickers are usually applied, Right. That notation applies to the fact that I did not see pri prior to your statement that there was not an inspection sticker that even existed on your vehicle. I did not know that. Yeah. Um, what I did know and what I explained to you a number of times is that you were pulled over be because your registration was expired. And I explained to you that they figured that by running your license plate. And you said that they never had enough time to run your license plate. So you are you saying that your from your perception, you seen that they ran my plates the moment they seen me? From what you remember? I did not tell you they read your plates from the moment that they saw you. I told you they knew you had an expired registration, most likely because they ran your plates. And you argued that they did not have sufficient time to do that. Okay, but what I'm saying is, Okay, let me just read. Let me just read your part because obviously you you just so in this affidavit. Okay, you said in this affidavit, while applicant alleges the police only could have known this because Raynasha Johnson described it to them, discovery notes the police had already been to the apartment complex and looked over the applicant's car while they were there. Did you That's write that? Right. Which means they didn't, uh, they already knew my tags was expired. They didn't just randomly uh, come across me when they seen me driving that night, right? Um, that is one theory that I proposed to you that the police knew that the registration on your vehicle may have known that the registration on your vehicle was expired because they had already looked at your car being at the residence and could have ran it at that time. Don't worry, it's not going anywhere for a little bit longer. 
And then the prosecutor gets to ask him some questions. And it gets way, way worse. Marcus Wilkerson, you you told me, yeah, that was a theory, right? But you also said discovery notes. Okay, let me, read, let, me, let, me, let me read this again. Maybe you didn't catch it. Discovery notes. The police had already been to the apartment complex and looked over the applicant's car. You really you also pulled it up on your phone. And yeah, we were outside of we we were out, we also uh looked over the applicant's car pro days prior to such and such and such. You not only did you read it on your phone from whatever you pulled up, but you also did <laughs> in this affidavit. So this is not just a theory, correct? It's a theory that they ran your license plate at the time uh, that they looked over the vehicle. There's a period in that affidavit. The why are you saying? I even said in that affidavit, discovery notes, Mr. People. I don't quite, and you just said that I read it to you. So I'm not quite understanding what the dispute is. Well, I'm, th there's, there's not a dispute. I'm trying to get you to affirm that you read it in discovery and it's not a theory. You read it in the police report, right? I read in the police report that the police had been to the residence and seen your vehicle there. Before they pulled me over the day after, right? Before they pulled you over, that's correct. Okay, that, 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 that part, that's all I was trying to get, get you to affirm on that part. Because the police was here earlier saying that they observed, like the, like the search warrant said, the search warrant said they observed and, you know, they, well, I'm not going to say that, but they also said that they ran my plates, but yeah, and that they didn't know who I was. So that's all I was trying to get you to affirm, that, you, that they knew who I was. But Mr. People, the officers who pulled you over may not know. In fact, I know they weren't the officers who went and observed your car because of who wrote the report. So I told you it was a theory that perhaps they communicated that to other officers to be on the lookout for your vehicle. That's what exactly what I told you. You told me it was a theory long before I got this affidavit. But then in this affidavit, you told me you affirm in this affidavit, and you also read on your phone that it wasn't a theory, that it was also true. You just also admitted it. So <laughs> please stop contradicting the, the facts. Uh, I'm sorry. He gets to, he's answering under oath. Right. You don't get to write in the script for him to speak. He right. is speaking from his own mind and his own mouth. What is your answer, my, Mr. My, Wilkerson? My next question no, is... I that's all he does is he he doesn't get anywhere. His theory sucks. He doesn't understand hell. He doesn't understand the English language, let alone anything else that's going on here. He's not touching the attorney on on anything. He's not making any points in his defense whatsoever. And then he just uh, occasionally like self soothes and so, and acts like aha, I did something, and he has nothing. <laughs> but but we do have something actually transpire here in just a minute. I'm asking, oh. what is your answer? Because you just went on through a long question that oh. you did not have a chance to answer. Go ahead. Okay. I noted to you, sir, prior to trial, because you said there's no way they ran your place. I said, it is also possible that when they were at your residence, they learned that your inspection, or not your inspection, your registration had been uh, expired and that they could have told other officers to be on the lookout for your vehicle. That is what I told you. That is what I said in the affidavit, that it was a theory that that could have been the case, that they could have learned that because they were at the apartment complex. There is a period in that affidavit, Mr. Peoples, that separates one sentence from another. I wish I could put this on a projector. Let me ask your next question. He, we, we, he's All answered right. the same time, so, same way several times. I, I was trying to go to the next question. You want to go? But, uh, the next question is,
uh, the applicant also alleged the messages between Kiera and the applicant, which is me, girlfriend, at the time are exculpatory because Kiera indicates she didn't tell the police everything regarding the applicant's communication with Kiera Williams from, the, from his Facebook page. Notably, Kiera testified during the revocation hearings she did not tell the detective everything. Is that your, is this, do you affirm that in your affidavit? Absolutely. The messages between the two saying that she did not tell the police everything were no longer relevant because she testified to that. Now, after, at the hearing, when the detective, I mean, when uh, District Attorney Mike Laird, when he asked her, did you tell the detective everything? And she said, no, I didn't tell the detective everything. He moved to a completely, a whole nother question instead of asking her what it was that she left out. You remember that? The, about Detective Laird's, I mean, my, about DA Assistant District Attorney Laird's questioning. No, I do not remember that. That is my response to your question. All right. So, so really, oh, and I also wanted to know that it says in the 3914 that, uh, 3914, right? Uh, penal code, I mean, not penal code, code of criminal procedure, Texas, Texas Code of Criminal Procedures, 3914, discovery. It notes that you, that the defendant, well, let's say that you are not required to give me statements until, in, 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 unless the I wish I can remember the word, but after basically it's saying after the uh, a, a victim or a witness have testified, they they statements become public information. You remember that? Do you remember that part being in thirty nine fourteen? That's not accurate. I no, I don't. the The thirty nine fourteen says that I can provide you a copy of your own statement. Of my own statement. That's correct. The, the and you know, it separates the defendant and it separates the witness. The, it describes and separates the defendant and the witness. But that's not the. I forgot about this part. He 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 is adamant that that this attorney and and Judge Stevens don't know anything about this about this section, and he, only he knows. And he's just asking questions and getting to the bottom of things. The part I'm talking about, right? <laughs> I'm talking about the part that it says after after testimony, the statements that they testified to becomes public information. No, no, it's subject to your review if you request it. Is it OK? You put uh, open it up, when, you know, and read that no, part. I'm just I'm just telling you what the law is. That's so in once they testify, if they've given a statement. You request it, you are, are entitled to it if it is available. So that's what 3914 includes, among other things. We are in open court and everybody see this. So it's like, and it, if you move forward, what's your question? To him. So my thing is, my thing is, why were you concealing everything from me until after I was convicted? Mr. Peoples, again, I had you acquitted on your first aggravated sexual assault. You keep talking about you being convicted. The only thing that you've been convicted of so far is your 2016 aggravated assault charge, a number of the violations to which you pled true, which is sufficient to have found you guilty, the burden of proof, 
in a probation revocation hearing, as we have discussed, is preponderance of the evidence, not beyond a reasonable doubt. However, the court noted, even at that, and the only, uh, those were the only points that the state sought to prove in addition to the statements that you, uh, to the allegations in your motion to revoke probation that you had already pled true to, including being outside after curfew when you, when all these items were found in your vehicle and you have continued to accuse me of a conspiracy despite what you have told me. I want to uh, show you something real quick. 13. You're marking that as defendants 13. Defendant 13. So on my revocation here, on my revocation, the no, old, for, 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 oh. says uh, I have no objections to this thing. Oh, yeah. Okay. yeah, you can't refer to it unless it's uh, Admitted. You're moving to admit it? Yeah, I'm moving to admit it. Any objection? No objection. Admitted. And Judge, we can't put it up over the overhead. They can show it on the camera, but we yeah. can't put it on the overhead or else we'll lose Mr. Wilkinson's sound. Okay. Right. So you see where it say true for the being out past curfew, driving with a family license, aggravated sexual assault, uh Aggravated sexual assault and aggravated sexual assault. You remember this, right? Those are findings, Mr. Peoples. Those are the findings. Some of them were completed before the evidence regarding aggravated sexual assault was presented. Yes. I, those are my notes from your file. Yes. Those are ultimately the counts the court found true. Yes. So that's another that that's what the, the main thing I'm getting at. All of this was all of these they were uh what what they call it uh what y'all call it uh, when y'all moving to revoke these most this motion was put in the same day I was arrested, right? I Did believe so. Yes. So if this motion was put in the same Wait, day, hold on. When you say put in. You're talking about filed right yeah a record by the movement which was the state of texas right okay Go ahead. this motion was filed the same day i was arrested which means they had all of this plan before they even pulled me over correct are you what wait a minute when you say this was filed before you were arrested are you referring to the original motion to revoke probation or an amended motion to revoke probation the original the original so when you say they had all this planned what are you asking me specifically so the same day i was arrested they put in a motion to revoke me for three sexual assaults that 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 i haven't got charged with that i didn't get charged with until three months later and i didn't get indicted for for four months later well september october so I didn't get charged with it until November. I didn't get indicted until December. But yet it's on file for me to get revoked the same day they, they arrested me when they pulled me over. So wouldn't that pretty much determine the fact that they already knew they had this plan before they pulled me over to do this? Do with aggravated sexual assault? And get a conviction before my trial. Yes, dummy. They had all sorts of information on you. They were w working up the charges. That I they, they file things when they file things. There isn't a conspiracy here. This is the way it goes every time. This is the way it goes. They were investigating you. You were probably under surveillance. Lots of things. Um, the DA does not have authority to determine what is heard by the court laughing about this. as anybody who has witnessed or been to uh, a trial docket hearing is well aware.
So the DA didn't file this? The district attorney's office filed a motion to revoke probation alleging those allegations. Yes. The same day I was arrested. Right? The allegations were made prior to you being arrested by the three victims of the aggravated sexual assaults. Yeah, and the, and the motion was filed the day I was arrested. Correct? If that's what it states, him, then I have no reason to dispute that. So, I'm asking you, wouldn't that make a determination that they already knew what they had planned for me before they even arrested me? When you say what they had planned for you, do you mean obtaining DNA samples and pursuing the aggravated sexual assault charges based on the complaints of the victims in this case? Because if so, then my answer is yes. If you are asking me if they intended to arrest you um, and hold you until such time as they had DNA evidence or whatever it was they were waiting for to finalize or uh, before they received an indictment from the grand jury, then um, I, yes, they intended to hold you on the aggravated sexual assault charges, I believe, although you weren't charged with them, you were charged with your motion to revoke. You were not even charged. They filed the motion to revoke, seeking to revoke the probation to an aggravated offense to which you had already pled guilty. Which means I, that's, that's what that says to me, sir. Which means they were going for my probation first because they knew I was going to be able to prove my innocence if I figured out what they was doing, right? No what you mean by what they were doing um going for the probation first they went for the probation first that's what i'm saying the um certainly they knew that you had violated terms of and conditions of your probation aside from those three counts is that what you're asking why didn't you tell me that they were about to have a trial at my probation here <laughs> There wasn't a trial at your probation hearing. Are you continuing to? I'm sorry. I don't ask the question. Do you ask? So testimony, the judge sat there and said, based on scientific, scientific evidence and the testimony of the witnesses, it seems to be true. So I'm sentencing you to 20 years in prison. You telling me that's not a trial? That was a hearing on your motion to revoke probation, at which time the state. He, he's, he's an experienced attorney. He knows exactly what the hell it was. <laughs> You're not shaking him, dude. You haven't yet. Not once. Produced evidence regarding your alleged participation in three separate aggravated sexual assaults. You will note on the motion itself, there are a number of allegations. You pled true to several of them, and you denied others. When you denied others, the state presented evidence on those allegations you denied. All right. My last question. My last question. I mean, just so far, I do believe this is his last question. But if you have called a witness to the stand in your defense and he has uttered the phrase, your sexual assaults, a dozen times, you have failed. The, uh, you, uh, my turn of thoughts. And you made me lose my turn of thought. Oh, so. Before this revocation, was I ever convicted of a crime? Before that revocation? Yeah, before this revocation, when I turned 31 years old, was um, when I turned 33, actually, was I ever convicted of a crime? 
Not to my recollection. Okay. No more questions for you. Brilliant. Thank you. Thank you yourself. Make sure you put the exhibit you got into but but pay attention. This is the ultimate payoff. Yeah. You didn't get to have David and you keep it this is right here. Try to complete this witness. Uh, I think it's almost through. Thank you for bearing with us. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Mr. Wilson, I know you're ill right now. Is that correct? Yes, sir, I am. Okay. Matter of fact, you have pneumonia. Is that right? Yes, sir, I do. Okay. I'm in the hospital, but I uh, wanted to appear here today because my client wanted to call me as a witness. My, sorry, my former client wanted to call me as a witness, which I still can't understand. <laughs> yeah. Now, you've, you've tried to warn him several times about what he's told you has been waived. Is that correct? That's correct. And he waived his right to uh, that privilege. Am I correct? Yes, sir, he did. Did he ever admit to you that he committed these sexual offenses? Yes, he did. And as part of your um, strategy, did you pretty much recommend he not take the stand because of his confession to you that he committed these offenses? I recommended that he not take the stand on several grounds. I uh, uh, He did not take the stand at his first trial, which we were successful at. Um, I advised him numerous times uh, not to call me as a witness because he would be waiving his uh, attorney-client privilege and um, confidentiality as late, uh, I mean, as uh, aside from today, as recently as Monday, to which he responded both, I did that a long time ago. Uh, and you've already told them anyway, which I have never revealed to anyone that he had, in fact, indicated to me that he did commit these offenses. Uh, and quite frankly, even if I had, it never would have been admissible. I haven't. But the only thing that I've ever done in an ex parte notation was to tell the court that my client was one. Yeah, yeah, that's a good point. Even if he had had done that and broken his attorney client privilege and and said it to another attorney, they couldn't get it into evidence. But this guy calls his former attorney, puts him on the stand. His former attorney tells him, don't do it. You got a problem. Not only did he make a complete mess of his direct examination of him, it didn't even occur to this moron that he, he when he's done with his direct examination, he has to hand his witness over to a competent prosecutor. And this is what you get. Wanting to pursue a defense that alleged a conspiracy among police officers and the DA's office and the court that I believed would surely get him convicted at his second trial, um, to which I was told he gets to pick what defense he wants to assert after he is given all available advice. Thank you, sir. I'll pass one. Yeah. Anything else? Yes. Mr. Wilkins. Yes, sir. Wasn't I badgering you about testifying at that trial because I was telling you that she doing a bunch of lying. Wasn't I bad you about session fine and I'm and you telling me that okay now this is this is like way too technical. The, the, again this guy struggles with the English language and, and basic motor skills. But when 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 on cross examination the the uh your former attorney says he's waived his privilege and he admitted to me that he's guilty of sin. The only redirect you can have for that guy that's going to help is, is uh, I didn't do that. Or when when did when did I say did, did this happen? And then and then later say that that never occurred. He lied on the stand. That's the only thing you can say. And he comes in with some some tangential BS <laughs> right here, which which will be taken as a tacit admission that all that testimony is true. And should be.
It should be. That's the implication. That would be a bad idea. At your revocation hearing? No, the trial. The trial. At, at was, the trial? Um, I, I, I believe, I, I don't recall you badgering me about it. I recall us talking about it, and I recall telling you at that time that it would not be beneficial to you. And my theory was proven correct when you received an acquittal in that case, despite DNA evidence. So if I was trying so hard to, if I was trying so hard to, to testify, why would I admit to something that I'm fighting? You, you, see, you, you see why I wrote the grievance on you in the first place? Mr. Peoples, no, I don't. Quite frankly, you admitted it to the investigator. I asked you why you admitted it to the investigator. Um, and you said, I, I don't know why. I just did it because um, he was asking me over and over again. And I advised you that's OK that it can't be used against you anyway because it was work product privilege and part of the attorney client privilege. So, <clears throat> sorry, y'all, I have to pause my IV. Thank you. So, hang on, I'm so sorry. Give me just a second. Oh. Will you? I, I can't seem to stop that beeping. My apologies. Uh, please continue. You remember when you, when you was reading out, and it was so many t so many times later, where you was reading out Raynasha yeah. Raynasha Johnson report, and she said, "Well, the guy next door added me as a friend on Facebook, but I don't want to get him in trouble if he didn't do anything." You remember reading that out to me? Uh, I don't, but I won't dispute having said it if that's in the the report. But before you got, before you read that out to me, that you read that out to me after the revocation hearing. But before you, way before you even read that out to me, you kept telling me all three of the victims was accusing me. You remember that? That all three of the victims were accusing you. Yeah, you remember that? Yes, I do. They were. That's no, why you. No, they were not. Only Kier. Hold on. Hold on. I, I, I hold on. You. Hold on, you're, you're now arguing with your, okay. your, your own witness. Yes. Um, you get asked a question, he gave an answer. The statement that the defendant makes is not on the evidence because he's not the witness right now. The other man is. Go ahead, stay. All right. Can this man be excused? Yes, sir. All right. Uh, you are excused, Mr. Wilkerson. Thank you for bearing with us on this, uh, sir. Yes, Your Honor. Thank you. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to break for the evening. Can all of you return back at uh, uh, 930, 930 in the morning? Thank you. Please remember the instructions the court has given to you. Everyone else remains seated while the jury exits. Thank you. Holy wow. That's messed up. Well, that is truly the worst the worst witness I've ever seen. Uh, the, the witness himself is a smart guy. He's an attorney and, and he, he made a lot of sense, but from a strategic standpoint, the worst witness you could possibly call a guy who he's trying to, he's trying to use as a scapegoat saying you did, you didn't tell me stuff and that's why I got convicted. Then you waive your privilege and he divulges that you've admitted to all the crime. <laughs> <laughs> what, what, with your attorney client privilege so th that that adds credibility to to the admission i mean this guy was going to get convicted anyway he's representing himself he doesn't know what he's doing it's actually good in this case I, I, he's i i can't imagine him being a productive member of society in any way he he needs to he needs to go away for a long long time he's not going to change he did this he got away with it once. He did it more. He's not going to stop. He's he is too low functioning to have any um, 
any sort of he doesn't have any skill set that I can see that that where he would be employable or, or helpful. So he's just going to he's just going to uh, you know pursue pursue those sorts of uh, he's going to pursue crime the rest of his life. Th- th- that much is clear to me. I don't think you, you know so people can try and God bless them for it. But in my estimation, I've seen enough of this stuff. I think that this guy is not is not uh, fixable for the purposes of placing him into society. The, the longer he sits, the better. The fact that he attempted to represent himself it did it do, it does remind me in some sense of of um, Daryl Brooks, where you have very very serious charges and a very very low functioning person. With the added benefit of thinking they're smart. <laughs> That's where the comedy comes in. So the facts of the case are horrible. And I'm not, yeah, yeah, you know, or whatever. That's what I mean by dark. It's not like I'm making dark humor, you know. It's just that the terms of the case are are, are awful. But his stupidity is is it's humorous. I, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> I've never seen, I've never seen somebody go down that hard. Like, the, I can't think of a worse thing to do in a case <laughs> than to get, call your prior attorney and have him say, "Yeah, you admitted it to me," <laughs> and reluctantly say it. Like, I don't want to do this to you, dude. But uh, you know, here I am. First, he beefs him, so he's he's causing this attorney trouble. This trouble, this attorney didn't do anything wrong. Not a damn thing that I can see that this attorney did wrong. So he beefs him, you know, ca- causing him trouble. And now it's not, it's not going to go anywhere because this guy has zero credibility and he'll, he'll be fine with it. But it's, he's just causing trouble and aggra- aggravation for his prior attorney. Then he calls him in thinking that's going to help him. Oh, it was fun, but exasperating. Thank you all for coming out. I appreciate it. Friday night. Y'all behave yourselves. You know the rules. You know the rules. As usual around here, pants are optional. And I'm not bailing you out. Have a good night.